Hello everyone, welcome back to the study, Planning and Sustainable Tourism Development Case Study. Tourism to islands is a special form of tourism that often requires specific consideration as there are distinctive features of islands. An island resort does not have the ability to handle a large number of tourists due to small economy, fragile environment, limited resources and diversified socio-cultural aspects that can result in unique impacts and challenges to developing a successful tourism destination. Today we look at island tourism development and its impacts using the case of Zanzibar through exploring these four topics. Zanzibar's Geography and Tourism the economic, socio-cultural and environmental impacts of tourism. First, Zanzibar's geography and tourism background. Zanzibar is one of the Indian Ocean Islands. It is situated on the Swahili coast, off the coast of East Central Africa, adjacent to mainland Tanzania consisting of many small islands and two large ones. It's a partly self-governing state in Tanzania. The capital is Zanzibar City, its main ethnic groups are Arabs, Hadimu, Swahili, Tumbatu. The official languages are Swahili, Arabic, English. Zanzibar's most famous person is Freddie Mercury, the lead singer from Queen. Generally, Zanzibar looks green all year round with natural richness in terrestrial and marine natural resources. Considerable areas of fertile soil and a favorable climate enable the production of a variety of tropical crops, most importantly cloves and coconuts. Fish is an important part of the diet, and local fisheries employ perhaps about one-tenth of the population. Zanzibar's main industries are spices, raffia, and tourism. Tourism in Zanzibar includes the tourism industry and its effects on the islands. Tourism is the top income generator for the islands, outpacing even the lucrative agricultural export industry and providing roughly 25% of income. The main airport on the island is Zanzibar International Airport. Tourists can fly into Dar es Salaam and take a ferry to the island. Zanzibar features outstanding white sandy beaches flanked by barrier reefs. Stone Town on its western edge has been designated as the UNESCO World Heritage Site. There are mainly two types of market segments to Zanzibar, one is culture and history explorers. The second type of tourists is sun, sea and sand tourists. Europe supplies the lion's share of Zanzibar's visitors, over 70%. But Africa is looking increasingly attractive as its share of arrivals has grown from 2% in 1985 to 13% in 2009. The number of tourist arrivals in Zanzibar has experienced a tenfold increase in the last 30 years. From around 20,000 in 1985 to over 200,000 in 2014. A 2009 survey reveals that 92% of tourists to Zanzibar are for leisure, 3.4% for business, 3% VFR, and 1.8% for other reasons. A SWOT analysis shows that Zanzibar is strong in its natural and cultural endorsement, good brand and political stability with potential opportunities to develop these assets further. But key challenges and threats the tourism faces are poverty-related issues health and safety issues and the deterioration of built and natural environment. The tourism development in Zanzibar closely follows a destination life cycle model. The exploration stage is the beginning of destination development at about 30 years ago when explorers visited the island and the tourism infrastructure was limited. The involvement stage of Zanzibar is about 15 years ago that that comes with the increasing visitation and large number of local investments in tourism and public infrastructure. The development stage is the 1990s that is characterized by increased foreign direct investment and a range of visitors and market segments. Many new hotels were built then. At the consolidation stage, the main income of the local economy comes from tourism, and the visitation levels continue to the development of new markets. Stagnation occurs when visitor numbers peak, capacity is reached, and the area is no longer fashionable. 
Zanzibar is still at the development stage but it is preparing for the future stagnation and tourism decline that is associated to this. As the ultimate Indian Ocean destination, Kenya, South Africa and Mozambique are the key competing destinations, although this commodity product also competes with Mauritius, Seychelles, the Maldives and Thailand. Demand for beach tourism is likely to grow but massive development underway in countries closer to Europe such as Egypt and along sub-Saharan African coasts will continue to put pressure on prices. Accommodation, infrastructure and quality of service in Zanzibar are considerably below the standard of competitors. The government plays a major role in promoting the industry in Zanzibar. The official government tourist board sets up the vision of the government of Zanzibar regarding tourism and aims to become one of the top tourism destinations of the Indian Ocean, offering an upmarket. High-quality product across the board within the coming decades with a focus on sustainability. The increase in tourism has led to significant mixed economic, environmental impacts and impacts on local communities, who were expected to benefit from economic development but in large part haven't. Economically, tourism undoubtedly brings significant positive financial benefit to the country and the people in the ways through foreign exchange earning, direct and indirect contribution to revenue, improved employment, investment stimulated in infrastructure, technological advancement and positive talent pool and positive multiplier effect from these. Tourism is a significant source of income and foreign exchange in Zanzibar. Overall, tourism in Zanzibar represents 27% of GDP, 80% of foreign direct investment, and 70% of foreign currency earnings. The tourism sector created an estimated 22,000 direct and 50,000 indirect jobs, 6 out of the island's total population. Tourism not only attracts investment and creates jobs in the tertiary sector, it also encourages growth in the primary and secondary sectors of industry. This is known as the multiplier effect, which in its simplest form is how many times money spent by a tourist circulates through a country's economy from top to bottom. For example, money spent in a hotel helps to create jobs directly in the hotel, but it also creates jobs indirectly elsewhere in the economy. The demand for local products increases as tourists often buy souvenirs, which increases secondary employment. The multiplier effect continues until the money eventually leaks from the economy through imports the purchase of goods from other countries. But major negative impacts are also significant, including problems of leakage, enclave tourism, economic dependence, seasonal character of tourism jobs, inflation and opportunity cost. One biggest problem to the small island tourism economy is the leakage problem of tourism. The islands do not really benefit from earnings from tourists as expected because most of them pay directly to foreign tourism agencies in their own countries. Many Italian-owned hotels offer all-inclusive deals. Tourists often eat and spend their time only at the hotels and do not support much the local economy through the purchase of products and services. The direct charter and packaged holiday companies are mainly from Europe dictate the tourism channels. Over 80% of the requirements in the tourism sector are sourced from outside Zanzibar. Only 10.2% of the total tourism revenue is kept domestically, the major of the income leaks out of the country. Unreliable capacity in terms of quantity and quality of the local supplies are among the leading factors that trigger high leakages. Can you connect the destinations to the correct percentages of leakage? The answer is India, the Caribbean, Thailand, and Zanzibar. The World Bank 2010 estimates that nearly 10,000 Zanzibari people are employed directly in hotels, 400 in diving, 900 in restaurants, 35 as guides, 5,000 in construction and around 50,000 in directly through supply chains. Most Zanzibaris, however, are employed in low-paid jobs in the tourism sector, with no benefits and few future prospects of advancement, while foreigners usually hold all managerial jobs. In Zanzibar, fishermen are no longer allowed on the beaches due to tourists, for example, at Uroa. 
The hotels have fenced off the beaches to make them private, which means that the local fisherman cannot fish. Where the fisherman does have access, the tourists have scared the fish away. This is a form of enclave tourism, which means the development of all-inclusive closed-off resorts in a destination with all required facilities are exclusively for tourists. Diversification in an economy is a sign of health. However, if a country or region becomes dependent for its economic survival upon one industry, it can put major stress on the country and people. Dangers related to large dependence on tourism include seasonal unemployment and a rapid increase in the price of land, often accompanied by land speculation. In the Gambia, for instance, 30% of the workforce depends directly or indirectly on tourism. The Maldives 83%. Seychelles 21%. Jamaica 34%. And about 80% in Zanzibar. Increasing demand for basic services and goods from tourists will often cause price hikes that negatively affect local people and residents. Tourism development and the related rise in real estate demand dramatically increase building costs and land values. This further pushes up other prices and cases inflation and makes it more difficult for local people, particularly the poor. Many islands are developed by the tourism sector only for seasonal tourism. This is the case in Zanzibar's tourism that is characterized by seasonal fluctuations in arrivals due to climate and the holiday periods in the countries where visitors originate. This results in seasonal and casual employment, underutilization of the facilities, and overcrowding and stresses upon the transport system and the public services. Zanzibar's tourist arrivals peak in December to January, July, August but dip in March to April as shown in the figure. It is possible to mitigate the effect by targeting regional tourist markets, honeymooners, young independent travelers and the older time-rich travelers. Socio-cultural impact of tourism. Tourism development has brought to Zanzibar not only income, but more importantly, new ideas and lifestyles, which have impacted the traditional local communities. Some of these might be positive but some argued that tourism had caused cultural erosion and cultural degradation through exposure to Western habits. Overall, the impressive growth of the tourism industry has given rise to discontent and conflict between communities, local people and tourists, and between communities and government officials. Cultural erosion normally covers these specific aspects. Commodification, i.e. turning local culture into commodities due to tourism's expectations causing degradation of indigenous culture. Young people see tourists as role models, arts and crafts become commoditized, songs and dances are geared to commercial performance, changing to cater for tourist taste and meet the constraints of the tourist itinerary. With about 99% of the population being Muslim, much of the cultural and religious practices are at danger from tourists' ideas, perceptions, and modes of behavior. Ethical issues, such as crime, child abuse, labor, inequality, sex tourism, prostitution, etc. One of the most serious impacts of the rapid tourism development has been a large increase in drug and alcohol consumption. Crime has also risen, especially muggings and petty theft but also violent crimes and robberies. These crimes have been directed at foreign-owned hotels or foreigners living in the capital. Loud music, vandalism, alcohol consumption, and more passive issues of inappropriate dress and behavior were raised. Inequity, tourism development has not led to the employment of more Zanzibari women. On the contrary, women have even lost out to men in the competition for new employment opportunities. As in Muslim society, in the past women used to be involved in the fishing business as middle men, however, now that fishermen sell directly to hotels, many women have lost both their jobs and income. Westernization, cultural clashes can occur due to social interaction between cultures that without tourism would probably not happen. Standardization, destinations risk standardization in the process of satisfying tourists' desires for familiar facilities. Tourists often look for recognizable facilities in an unfamiliar environment, like well-known fast food restaurants and hotel chains. 
Displacement refers to the physical dispossession of people from their lands. For example, Commonwealth Games in Delhi for special tourism zone in which people from nearby villages are displaced. One of the most popular subjects in island tourism is the impact of tourism on the island's environment and ecosystem. Small islands have small social and environmental carrying capacities, and so the adverse impacts of tourism tend to be more severe in these places than in the large mainland countries. More precisely, coastal pollution, water shortages, sewage treatment, waste disposal, traffic congestion, noise pollution, overbuilding, and aesthetic degradation are some of the impacts that different studies found in Zanzibar as well as many other island destinations such as Greek islands. The Balearic Islands, the Caribbean, the Galapagos and the Channel Islands. Resource depletion. The increasing need for construction materials and new building areas has intensified the competition and led to deforestation and the degradation of ecosystems, resulting in resource depletion, degradation, and conflicts. These can include water, land, food, and energy resources. Waste and health issues. Sewage is put straight into the sea. At Zanzibar town, tourists walk around the sewage as it trickles onto the beach. This also affects the health of the local people. The main issues raised included water contamination, with the increased number of hotels and waste being disposed of into the sea, the increased salination of drinking water due to demand lowering the water table and waste management. Other issues such as overfishing also emerged from secondary data and conversations with key stakeholders. Sewage is put straight into the sea. At Zanzibar town, tourists walk around the sewage as it reaches onto the beach. Ecosystem damage. For example, coral reefs are often damaged by tourists engaging in scuba diving and snorkeling activities, the fact that can reduce even further the already diminishing fish populations. In Zanzibar, the coral reef to the north of the island near Nungwe is being destroyed by tourists breaking off pieces and taking them home as souvenirs. Overfishing, particularly crab, lobster, squid, octopus to supply to restaurants. Inflating prices and depleting the resources. The fish population has been reduced by one-third over the past 80 years. There is a significant threat from the degradation and loss of marine ecosystems corals for diving, snorkeling-related tourism. There are also threats to tourism hotels and infrastructure from coastal erosion and sea level rise, and in the longer term, to key tourist areas such as Stone Town. Climate change. Tourism is a highly climate-sensitive sector. It is suggested that significant increases in average temperature for Zanzibar, with increases in maximum monthly temperature of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius by the 2050s and 2 to 4 degrees Celsius by the 2090s. These increases far exceed the rates of changes seen over the past 50 years and would significantly shift the climate of the islands. Climate change will also affect the energy and water use of the tourism sector, increasing demand for both. Rising temperatures will increase air conditioning use and costs, the overall electricity demand on the island, and water demand, which is already extremely high in the tourist sector. The shortage of water has already caused significant coastal erosion and saltwater intrusion on the islands. The impacts will be on tourism and ultimately the local communities. All the climate models show that the rainfall regime will change but the projections vary across the models and seasons. Extreme events such as floods and droughts have increased in numbers and or intensified. Low and erratic rainfall on the islands consequently leads to crop failures and many major windstorms and monsoons. Zanzibar Vision 2050 is the overall framework guiding all development plans and policies including tourism plan. It sets out that the development will not only require a consistently high economic growth rate but also a commitment to sustainability, poverty eradication, and the transformation of all aspects of Zanzibar's economy and society. The are the 10 key areas of consideration. 1. A strong, sustainable and resilient market for high-value luxury tourism market. 
2. Diversified tourism products backed by a focus on the conservation, revival, management and promotion. 3. Strong linkages between tourism and agricultural supply chain locally and minimize imports. 4. Strong local content in the tourism industry, incentives and awareness programs for all stakeholders while ensuring corporate social responsibility and investment. 5. High-quality local labor force through youth employability, training and apprenticeships. 6. Expansion of sustainable marine tourism and eco-tourism. 7. Efficient and reliable maritime infrastructure network and services, including seaports and undersea pipelines. 8. Sustainable access to and management of safe and clean drinking water. 9. Sustainable sanitation service provision. 10. Strong institutional framework for the sustainable waste management. Thank you for listening, hope you enjoy the information. Don't forget to subscribe for more to come.